Let's dig deeper now in the role, if any, drugs, especially prescription drugs, may have played in Whitney Houston's death. A close family friend tells CNN that Houston was, in his words, no longer an addict, no longer using hard drugs. He said she'd been clean from hard drugs for three years, but took Xanax for anxiety, adding that it was not unusual for her to have a drink when she went out. And we won't know for several weeks whether Houston combined the two before she died or took excessive amounts of either. Joining us now is 360MD Sanjay Gupta, an addiction medicine specialist, Dr. Drew Pinsky, host of Dr. Drew on HLN. Sanjay, as I said, we don't know wh what Houston died of. Uh, we're awaiting these toxicology results. What can happen, though, to a human body when even a small amount of prescription drugs are mixed together and, and worse when alcohol is added to that mix? Well, the, the best way to think about this is you think about uh, the, the umbrella term central nervous system depressants. Uh, it's a big, big term, but basically it means these, these medications, even in isolation, can, can sort of depress your central nervous system and, and affect the things that you don't think about in your body, your ability to regulate your heart rate, your blood pressure, and also your, your drive to breathe. So in isolation, they can do this, although that's, that's uh, something that people try and uh, be, be mindful of. But, but when you add things together, to your point, and you mix in alcohol as well, it's not a one plus one equals two situation. When they say the term synergistic, uh, that, they're referring to this idea that in combination, they're somehow worse uh, than just simply being additive. So the idea that someone, you know, the, these things that you don't think about are affected, uh, your, your blood pressure, heart rate, breathing, uh, that's possibility with, with the mixing of these medications. Dr. Drew, Whitney uh, Houston's last performance w was with singer Kelly Price. It was very impromptu at, at a party two nights before her death. Kelly Price told me she saw Whitney Houston drinking champagne as many people were at this party. I just want to play that. Did it worry you to see her drinking at all, I mean, given, given her past? Well, no, I wasn't worried about it. I didn't see where it was excessive. I didn't see, I saw her with a couple of glasses of champagne. And then our interactions were normal. There was nothing that seemed that, that it was over the top. She didn't seem to be intoxicated to me. Again, um, I know intoxicated when I see it. And so I, I wasn't worried about it at all. You said that, that hearing from her friends like that makes you angry. Why? Oh, Anderson, it is, uh, I, I'm, uh, no disrespect, but this is the highest level of ignorance. The fact is that just because somebody isn't doing hard drugs does not mean their addiction is not active. Please, everybody, I'm trying to get this message across to the world, and we, it seems to be falling on deaf ears. If you have addiction today, you're not going to die of hard drugs. You're going to die a prescription death. That is how addicts die today, period. Every one of my patients in the last five years that has died of their addictive pathology, was taking medications, a doctor prescribed, often the way their doctor told them, but they happen to put them in combination because they're an addict. They take a little more than everybody else and put in a little alcohol. Seeing Whitney with a champagne in her hand should have been a alarm sounding for all of her friends. They should have pulled her aside and said, Whitney, you were in treatment just last May. My God, what's going on? You seem to be not doing so well. Let's get, let's get you to a meeting right away. Where the goal is abstinence for a reason, not because it's mean or mean-spirited, but because it's what saves lives. People with addiction do not put pills in their mouth without being in harm's way. And when are we going to learn this? How many deaths? Brittany Murphy, uh, you know, Michael Jackson, just go down the list. Every single celebrity you've seen die in the last five years has been a prescription death with the, with the duplicitous involvement of their physician without understanding the addictive pathology, just as these friends are not understanding it. But, but Dr. Drew, I mean, there's plenty of people who take Xanax and have a glass of champagne. No? Or am Absolutely. I completely wrong? Absolutely, and they're not drug addicts. These are, uh, these are listen, Anderson, i got to interrupt you again. Absolutely, these are excellent medications used properly. Listen, opiates, pain medication, these are exceedingly important medication unless you're an opiate addict. Sir William Osler, at the turn of the century, called opium, opiates, uh, morphine sulfate, God's own medicine, because we could eliminate suffering. It's extremely compelling for physicians to give opiates and end suffering. The problem is, for people with a certain genetic makeup, it has a very dark side that will kill them if they continue to be exposed to it. Sanjay, don't you agree with me? Well, I th and I think there's a certain percentage of people who, in com when they take these things in combination, uh, even if they haven't been addicts, uh, that, that's the thing. And people think there's this perception that prescription drugs, uh, because they're prescription drugs, are safer somehow than the illicit drugs like cocaine and heroin. And, and uh, to Dr. Drew's point, I mean, one person dies every 19 minutes 
of prescription drug overdoses. Uh, I'm sure a lot of those people were addicts, but I think you know th there's there's a larger message here. You know, the, the business traveler who takes a Xanax, maybe has a drink, and then takes an Ambien to sleep at night. That may sound more familiar than That's I realized. In trouble. But that that could that can really get somebody in trouble, regardless of whether they even had an addiction history in the past. So it's, it's quite frightening. The CDC calls and, and, and this a silent epidemic. Sanjay.